So the last area I'd, uh, I'd like to talk about with respect to quick field and high voltage applications has to do with uh, a part of the software that's called uh, Label Mover. And that's under the Tools pull down menu. I can bring it up. And Label Mover has several different options. You can see there are three listed here. The first is Serial Analysis, second Tolerance Analysis, and the last one Optimization. I'm going to go through two of these today. I'm going to talk about Optimization and then Serial Analysis. So we'll go ahead and do Optimization first. Click that. The first thing you want to do is define the base problem. This is the, the initial geometry and problem definition that you want to use to set up the problem. So I'm going to select another coaxial cylinder problem. And again, this is very very similar to the, uh, the one we discussed first today, the, the coaxial cable. In this case, it's a little bit different geometry. The, the ID is a little bit smaller with, uh, relative to the OD, but very similar problem. So we've defined the base problem. The next thing is to pick the values. So we can go over here and add values in the goal. And you can see it, it gives you a number of different uh, things to select from. What I'm going to do is basically pick the, the high voltage edge. And I'm going to come over here and pick the local value of the field strength. And you can see that in goal settings, you have a number of different things. I'm going to go ahead and pick Minimize, and then add that and close it. So what this is going to do in the optimization process is try and minimize the field strength at that outside diameter of the inner conductor of the, on the problem, on the, on the cable. And next we go to Variations. And I'll set up the variations. And again, what I'm going to do in this case is basically pick that same edge and allow quick field to vary it geometrically. And in this case, we're going to do scaling. So this will allow quick field to basically change the size of that feature in the model. And so I'm going to go from a factor of 1 for its initial size to a maximum scaling of nine times the, the current size. I know that's the, the worst case can be since that's the, the relative uh, scaling of the outer diameter. And again, I just add that, close this out. Now the problem's set up, and I can go ahead and do the optimization. There's also an option here you can see to, to uh, limit the number of maximum runs that are done on the optimization. I'll go ahead and leave that at 30. So we'll go ahead and start the optimization. You can see it's, uh, it's generating a number of problems here. I don't know if you can see in the background, but it's, it's uh, creating a, a number of different uh, problems with a different scaling of the uh, for the interconductor. So here are the scale values. So again, this is the initial setup with a scaling of 1. In this case, the interconductor diameter has been scaled up by a factor of 5, and now it's coming back down into the, uh, the high 2s or 3s region. So you can see it's still working through the problem, and now it's it's stopped at this point. And what what you can see is uh, you can show this analytically that basically the solution for this problem is a case where the ratio of the outer diameter over the inner diameter is equal to e, or 2.71828, and in this case the the outer diameter is nine millimeters. So the, the value of the inner diameter to, uh, to, uh, for that solution comes out to be about 3.31. So 
This is reasonably close. I think this is probably within about a percent of, or so of that uh, that solution. And we can look at this and, uh, and view the fields in this case. So there's the solution for the optimized uh, case. And you can see that the uh, diameter of the center conductor is, is uh, roughly a factor of three larger than it was when, when we initially started. The other thing that I would point out with this is that um, QuickField will create a folder uh, in your location on the derive uh, and have the each iteration uh, of the problem file and the results file in that folder. So if after the iteration, if you wanted to go back and, and look at specific iterations, that were done, you could do that at, at a later time and save the data for you so that you can do that. So this is a nice tool to be able to, uh, to try and, uh, and quickly solve problems and, and iterate to a solution. The other thing that, uh, that you can do, again, with Label Mover is uh, again called the serial analysis and this is uh, a similar tool in label mover we'll go through and, and show how it works but it basically allows you to step through a, a series of problems again in kind of a similar manner after it's been set up so once again the first thing you want to do is pick the base problem in this case what I'm going to do is is pick a problem with a cylinder spaced away from a, a um, plane surface. And so, again, here's the model. We have a ground on the, on the right side. Uh, high voltage is this cylinder coming out of the page. And so, again, I can go in and set the values that I'm interested in. And I'm going to do something similar in this case. I'm going to look at the fields on the, again, on the edge of the, uh, the high voltage electrode in this case. And then in terms of the steps, What I'm going to do is basically move that high voltage electrode closer and closer to the ground plane. And I can do that for, uh, for one step, so I can repeat that. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and repeat it four times. But again, this has application in the real world. Oftentimes in high voltage problems, it's desirable to minimize the, the stray inductance in the circuit in order to obtain a very fast rise time of the output pulse. And on the other hand, on an, in sort of a competing manner, you need to also maintain enough separation between hardware so that you don't have high voltage insulation problems. So it becomes a trade-off then of how small you can make the geometry to keep the inductance down while still keeping it large enough to avoid these insulation problems. So with a problem like this, I can try and iterate through a, a set of uh, different problems with the, the different separations. And if I know the threshold at which I want to keep the fields below, then I can, can look at the results and decide which of those iterative solutions will work best for me. So again, I've got the problem set up. I've got the baseline, the values, the steps. I can go ahead and get the results.
and you can see it's crunching through the different iterations. And so here it has the, the different iterations and the different field strengths for each of those. And you can see as, as you get closer and closer to the ground plane, the field strength obviously goes up higher and higher. But again, this is a, it's a nice tool for, uh, for quickly running a, a batch of, of different iterations to try and, and uh, solve a field problem uh, uh, very quickly and, and efficiently.